that's the only uh, beautiful thing about or it's one of the beautiful things about Elon taking over Twitter is that we do have this new sort of ideological battleground. We have this new town hall form of discussion that a lot of people are very upset about that these you know unmentionable people are allowed to communicate on this platform now and they're very upset that he has sort of you know it's so easy for people to demonize him because he's a, a multi-billionaire the, one of the richest people on earth and that he can just buy this and run it any, any way he wants and there's so many uh, attack vectors you know in terms of like people pointing out flaws in his uh, application the way he's doing this the implementation of his own rules and guidelines and what's allowed and not allowed and but at least we have a place where people can actually talk freely and you've seen a gigantic change in the kind of responses that people have to bullshit like when the biden administration gets fact checked and it's proven that they're lying about certain things that they tweet and then they delete the tweet that is wild that is wild to see and very encouraging to me yeah i am slightly cautious but a huge fan of what i think elon is doing i really you know he's an unusual guy he's strangely a little hard to read even though i think the best interpretation that is is that he's fairly straightforward about what he's trying to accomplish and mm -hmm. he obviously likes to play games he likes to win but the change on Twitter is remarkable. It is not all positive, but I would say it is net wildly positive, right? The, the difference one feels, I mean, one literally does not feel the weight of Big Brother watching every right. interaction there anymore. Now, whether Elon can stabilize it, I don't know. He's got a monumental challenge figuring out how to moderate it and it does need to be moderated at some level but how you can moderate it without killing off the right to free expression that he i think clearly values it's quite a puzzle it's a it's a tough puzzle um <clears throat> but i would say i'm rooting for him for two reasons the great one is I think he's headed in the right direction. I've watched him make mistakes. I've watched him correct himself and I have the sense of a guy who likes to act and is not afraid to realize, oh, that didn't work and take a different tack. That's a very positive thing. And so, you know, he has skills most don't. And I think he's more up to the challenge than anybody else that I've seen. The other reason that I'm strongly rooting for him is that there's nothing else out there. Mm, there right? is nothing else out there. I mean, the other alternatives are ideologically captured by the right. I mean, if you go to uh, some of these other social media platforms and you try to talk sense about January 6th, you'll, you, you get attacked. They talk about the dangers of invading the Capitol and that it is a real issue. Like, <laughs> people try to dismiss it. Right. No, it's, uh, it, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy on both sides. It's crazy on both sides. It's crazy on both and sides. And isn't that just inherent to the human condition, uh, what you're talking about, like tribal isolation? that like if you're isolated or ostracized from the group it's very damaging it's very scary for people so they do get captured by whatever group they're in and that we have to stop thinking about it in terms of good people or bad people and think about it rather in terms of just in inherent to the human condition to adhere to a group of preordained uh, b b opinions like you're adopting a conglomeration of opinions and ideas that the tribe has accepted we're seeing this with woke politics. We're seeing this with crazy QAnon people. We're seeing this across the board with everything. 